Now we're going to go ahead and look at problems using the p-value method, although you'll notice everything's already worked out because I want to focus on comparing the traditional method to the p-value method, which is the same thing as comparing the critical value method to the p-value method. So just making sure you understand where everything came from. First reading this question. A study of 8,411 yards, like front yards, found that 437 of them had broken sprinklers. Sprinklers. Traditionally, 5% of yards have broken sprinklers. This study was conducted to see if the percent has increased. Use alpha equals 0.03, a 0.03 significance level. So first I needed to find H0 and H1, and because it says the study was conducted to see if, so it doesn't say test the claim, but that is what we're doing, is we're seeing if the percent has increased. So I want P is greater than, which I have to use P is equal to in H0. And since traditionally 5% have broken sprinklers, I rewrote that as the decimal number, since I'm going to be using it in a formula later. And increased is my claim, so H1 is my claim. The formula requires you to start with p hat, the sample proportion. So I had to find p hat by taking the number of yards with broken sprinklers divided by the number of total yards, and I got a decimal value that kept going. So remember, I need to use at least five digits past the decimal to prevent round off error. So I start off with p hat minus p, where p is 0.05, divided by the square root of p, the same value we just used, times its complement. So 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.95. 95% of yards do not have broken sprinklers, divided by this sample size, which was the study where the 8,411 yards were used. So as I enter all of this into my calculator, I get a test statistic that keeps going, but if I'm going to write it with two digits past the decimal, I get 0.82. It's positive. I usually expect a positive test statistic when I have the greater than symbol. Now, if I was using the traditional method, I would start with alpha. Alpha is given to me as 0.03, and I want to know whether I need to cut it in our half or not. So I look to see what type of test I have. I have a right tail test. Right tail because, whoops, sorry, up here it's like an arrow pointing to the right. So if I have a right tail test, then I'm going to get a positive test statistic, and I do not cut alpha in half because I do not have two tails. But if I have a right tail test, then I need all of alpha to be in that right tail, and the Z table, why the Z table? The test statistic is a reminder that we're using the z-table. The z-table finds area to the left, the opposite of what I want, so I need the complement of this value. So to have 0.03 in the right tail is to have 0.97% of the area to the left. So I go in the middle of the z-table, and when you look for 0.97, it's going to be closest to positive 1.88. So I now have my critical value. Had I done the same problem but wanted to find a p-value, I wouldn't have done any of the work off to the left. I would have instead started with the test statistic. So critical values start with alpha, p-values start with the test statistic, and because I have a right tail test, I want the area to the closest edge, which would be the area to the right of that score. So instead of starting in the middle of the z-table, I start on the edge of the z-table. And so when I go to row 0 0.8 underneath 0 0.02, I find in the middle this time the value 7939. Now remember, a p-value should never start off more than 50%. So that might be a hint you have a problem. Also. If I'm on the right side of the curve, to the right of the middle, then I want the area in that right tail, and remember this is area to the left. So I need to take the complement, so 1 minus that value, to get 0.2061.
This area is less than 0.5, so it's a correct starting spot. And I'm not going to double it. Why not? Remember, because we said that we have a right tail test, a one tail test, then all of that area is just in one tail. So then I would need to decide whether I reject or fail to reject. Now, in the traditional method, you would have say, I have this bell-shaped curve with a critical value, a cutoff value of 1.88, because I've got alpha in my right tail, and I need to compare where the test statistic falls. Since it does not fall to the right of the right critical value, then I fail to reject H0. Now, when you do the p-value method, it's just a different path to the same destination. So you should still say you're going to reject H0, but let's go ahead and look at that. So over here, the rule is, if the p-value is less than alpha, reject H0. So my p-value of 0.2061, is it less than alpha of 0.03? And remember, if you aren't sure, you can always put zeros at the end of the number so that you can think of it as two different four-digit numbers, and it's not less than, so I failed to reject H0. The exact same answer I got on the prior problem.